Hi, welcome to Dig Into China. I'm Dong Xiong. In the afternoon of August 29th, the People's Bank of China announced that it had bought 400 billion yuan in long-term government bonds in the open market to replace the 400 billion yuan in bonds that has just matured, a process known as rolling over government bonds. While this may seem like a straightforward rollover, it is in fact unanchored money printing. Two conditions define unanchored money printing. First, the government fails to repay its debt. Second, the People's Bank of China begins directly purchasing government bonds. The Chinese government's creditworthiness is extremely low, significantly lower than that of all other major countries worldwide. Moreover, the Chinese government wields unchecked power to the extent that it could even mobilize military and police forces to arrest government bondholders and execute them publicly. In this context, the government must avoid any indication of defaulting on its debt, as even the slightest move in that direction could have disastrous consequences. The second condition is when the People's Bank of China begins directly purchasing government bonds. Whether it acquires them from the primary market, the secondary market, or for any other reason, once the People's Bank of China directly buys government bonds, this condition is fulfilled. The People's Bank of China holds a very low position within China's power structure and can hardly be considered an independent entity. The central bank governor's status is much lower than that of the director of the tax policy department in the Ministry of Finance. When the two meet, the governor of central bank must demonstrate a significant level of respect, ensuring all formalities are observed before being permitted to speak with the director. Due to its low political status, the central bank is unable to request repayment from the Ministry of Finance. Consequently, for nearly 30 years, it has maintained a strict policy of not proactively purchasing government bonds. This stance reflects the central bank's most important lesson learned from the inflationary pressures experienced in China during the late 1980s and early 1990s. In 1980, China embarked on economic reforms and, facing a fiscal shortfall, began issuing excessive government bonds with a large portion purchased directly by the central bank. This led to the central bank effectively printing money to support government spending. By 1992, this practice had caused the most severe inflation since the founding of the People's Republic, with official annual inflation reaching as high as 24.1% and continuing until 1996. The aftermath included a wave of bankruptcies, mass layoffs affecting 50 million workers and widespread hardship, with some unemployed individuals experiencing such severe poverty that they resorted to extreme measures such as one man would accompany his wife to solicit clients while waiting outside and smoking. Had it not been for the hundreds of commitments made by the Chinese government in 2001 when China joined the World Trade Organization, coupled with the global shift of manufacturing to China, the country might have faced severe consequences. Today, it could have been as fragmented and devastated as war-torn Syria, with multiple factions, ongoing conflicts, and cities in ruins. Following this painful experience, the central bank and the Ministry of Finance established an informal agreement. First, the central bank decided to cease purchasing government bonds, whether from the primary or secondary markets. This decision stems from the fact that in China's bond market, both primary and secondary markets are predominantly controlled by state-owned and central enterprises, rendering them effectively indistinguishable. Second, when the government bonds held by the central bank mature, the Ministry of Finance must repay them. 
The central bank will not reinvest in new bonds, meaning that the amount of government bonds it holds can only decrease, not stay the same or increase. The central bank does not practice bond rollovers. Once bonds matures, the Ministry of Finance must repay them and the central bank will adjust its records accordingly. This policy is the only way to ensure that China avoids falling back to the problem of unanchored money printing. There has been just one notable exception to this policy over the years. In 2007, under the pressure of the global financial crisis, the central bank purchased 1.35 trillion yuan in special government bonds to support the 4 trillion yuan investment plan. This exception was largely ex accepted without much criticism, as the financial crisis was extremely severe and frightening. Major banks in Europe and the US were falling one after another, and many businesses disappeared overnight. Given the extraordinary circumstances, it was understandable that the central bank made this single exception. Following that, the People's Bank of China adhered strictly to the agreement and ceased buying government bonds. When the 1.35 trillion yuan in special government bonds matured, the Ministry of Finance repaid the central bank as per the agreement. At the end of 2007, the central bank held 1.63 trillion yuan in government bonds, which had decreased to 1.52 trillion yuan by the end of July 2024, a reduction of 110 billion yuan. This reduction represents the gradual repayment by the Ministry of Finance to the central bank. Let me reiterate the two crucial rules. First, the central bank is prohibited from buying government bonds, whether from primary or secondary markets. Second, when government bonds held by the central bank mature, the Ministry of Finance must repay the central bank. These rules are absolute and must be strictly adhered to. Any deviation from these rules would amount to unanchored money printing, and there is no room for negotiation. This year, the Chinese government has faced severe fiscal challenges due to a sharp decline in tax revenue and a collapse in the land market, which has significantly reduced overall fiscal income. By the end of July, total fiscal revenue had dropped by 5.3% compared to the previous year. To address the budget imbalance, the government has been increasing its bond issuance each month. By the end of July, the combined issuance of government and the local bonds had reached 10.95 trillion yuan, averaging 1.56 trillion yuan per month. The financial markets are struggling to cope with such a large volume for bond issuance, with around 400 billion yuan being pulled from the stock market each month, leading to considerable market distress. Consequently, the stock market continues to experience significant declines. Meanwhile, the external environment is worsening significantly, with escalating tensions between China and the West and the foreign investment fleeing the country at an unprecedented rate. In the second quarter, the net outflow of foreign direct investment FDI reached 14.8 billion yuan. This number refers specifically to direct investment in physical enterprises such as factories and companies rather than financial investments. A negative foreign direct investment figure signifies that many foreign companies are shutting down and are leaving China. A recent case is IBM's closure of its research division in China, where a brief three-minute meeting resulted in the immediate layoff of over a thousand employees with no opportunity for negotiation. Given this situation, the Chinese government is left with a final option, unanchored money printing. The central bank is likely to abandon its previous rules and resort to unanchored money printing. On July 1st, the central bank officially announced it would start buying government bonds directly, thus violating the first rule. This move indicated that further steps were likely and would come soon. On August 29th, when 400 billion yuan in bonds purchased by the central bank in 2007 matured, the Ministry of Finance was reluctant to repay them. The ministry effectively defaulted, and the central bank was unable to resist. 
Consequently, the central bank bought 400 billion yuan in long-term government bonds to replace the maturing ones, effectively engaging in a bond rollover. This maneuver allowed the Ministry of Finance to avoid repaying any money to the central bank. With this move, both rules have been entirely abandoned. The central bank can now freely buy government bonds, and the Ministry of Finance is no longer required to repay them. This marks the beginning of unanchored money issuance by the central bank. Once this path is taken, it is much like an addict to once they start using drugs, find it hard to escape from the cycle of dependency. The US also engages in quantitative easing, but it hasn't led to the same level of entrenchment. This is because the Federal Reserve operates with a degree of independence and is not directly controlled by the government. Although governments may pressure the Fed to, uh, for more aggressive monetary policies to achieve short-term goals, the Fed's independence helps maintain monetary stability. In contrast, the People's Bank of China lacks this independence. Once it starts unanchored money issuance, it can provide significant short-term benefits to those in power, including Xi Jinping. Over time, this habit can fundamentally change the rules governing the yuan. Some people are optimistic about the yuan's exchange rate, hoping that a rate cut by the US Federal Reserve might lead to a rebound and strengthening the yuan. However, this belief overlooks the persistent downward trend of the yuan. The idea that the yuan will surge just because of a fair rate cut is unlikely to materialize. With a gloomy economic outlook for China and onset of unanchored money printing, the yuan is expected to continue its downward trajectory. Thank you so much for watching. If you find this video helpful, please like it, drop a comment below, and hit the subscribe button right here. It really helps YouTube suggest my video to others. I'll be back with more content soon. Until then, stay well.